Hey guys, welcome to part two of our tutorial on making a custom PCB. In the last video, I showed you how to design and build the schematic for your circuit in Easy EDA. In this video, I'm going to continue with the PCB build process and show you how to lay out the components on the PCB, how to wire them, and how to submit the board for manufacturing. If you haven't already seen the first video, you probably want to watch that first, so I'll leave a link to it in the description. All right, let me just log into Easy EDA real quick. In the last video, I created a new project for my LM386 audio amplifier. You can get to your saved projects by clicking on your profile name up here, then clicking on My Projects. Find your project and click on it. I just have one so far. Now click on Open in Editor. So this is the schematic I made in the first video. Now we're going to turn this into a PCB file that we can send to Easy EDA for manufacturing. Click on this button up here, Convert Project to PCB. And all of the footprints associated with the symbols in the schematic will be transferred over here to the PCB editor. In the last video, I showed you how to change the footprint to match the type of component you're using. The thin blue lines here are called rat's nest wires. They're virtual wires that show you how the traces should be routed on the PCB, according to how you've wired your schematic. This is one of the reasons why it's helpful to have a schematic to work off of before designing the PCB. This purple rectangle here is the outline of the PCB. The first thing I'm going to do is start moving components onto the PCB. When you're placing components on the PCB, keep in mind how the finished PCB will be used. I'm going to place the gain, volume, and base potentiometers next to each other on one side of the board. That way it'll be easier to adjust each one when I'm actually using it. Just a rough layout is fine for now. We'll tighten everything up after we get all the components on the board. You'll also want to think about how electrical signals are going to flow through your circuit. You want to try to make a fairly smooth path throughout the circuit. Try to avoid making the signal zigzag back and forth from one side to the other if possible. That'll reduce the length of conductive traces and make the circuit perform better. This is an audio amplifier, and to keep the signal flow linear, I'm going to place the audio input on the left side, the audio output on the right side, and the LM386 around the center. This way the audio signal will flow from left to right. I forget if this is the audio input or the output. You can always refer back to your schematic to see which components are which. So yeah, JP1 is the input and JP2 is the output. I'll just move this to the left side of the PCB. And move the output to the right side. You can rotate components with the spacebar. Here's the power connector. It's usually good to put the power supply somewhere central. That way you can lay out the power traces in a star configuration. In a star configuration, each section of the circuit has a direct connection to the power supply, so each section will get an equal supply voltage. If you route the power traces to sections of your circuit in series, each section will create a voltage drop along the chain, and sections further from the power supply will have a lower voltage. Think about your circuit in terms of sections. Keep the components for each section grouped together. For example, this capacitor is for the base circuit, so I'm going to move it up near the base potentiometer. Now I'm just going to go through one component at a time and check its function in the schematic. Then I'll group it near other components in the same section. Long conductive traces act as antennas for radio frequency signals, so keeping the traces shorter will lessen the amount of interference and noise in the circuit. This applies to most circuits, not just audio amplifiers. Here are my power supply decoupling capacitors, so I'm going to place them near the power connector. I'm 
As you move components around, the rat's nest wires are recalculated to reflect the shortest electrical path between components in your circuit. Okay, now that all the components are on the board, let's see if we can tighten it up a little bit to make the board smaller. I'll start with the largest components, the potentiometers, since they're going to limit how small I can make the board. This capacitor jumped way down here for some reason. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now I'll adjust the PCB outline. Just click on it and drag the lines to where you want them. Actually, I think I can tighten this up even a little more. Okay, that looks better. The component labels here will be printed on the board in the silk screen layer, so I'm going to arrange them a little bit better. You can click on the label and drag it to where you want it. Pressing the space bar will rotate it. I'll just go through and arrange everything real quick. Okay, that's done. Easy EDA is kind of like a photo editing program. You'll need to select the layer you want to edit before you can draw traces on it. You can select the different layers up here. You can turn them off and on to make editing a little bit easier if you want. Okay, now I think we're ready to start drawing the traces. 
Up here is the PCB tools window. To draw a trace, click on the track tool right here. Now left click on a component's through hole to start the trace. Just moving your mouse will draw the trace. When you get to the component you want to connect to, left click again to finish the trace. We're editing the top layer now. Now I'll go through the circuit and draw the traces using the rat's nest wires as a guide. But be careful, the rat's nest wires aren't always right. And sometimes they don't give you the best routing for the optimum performance of your circuit. You always want to check the traces against the schematic. The traces in Easy EDA bend at 45 degree angles by default. It's kind of an industry standard, but it can be important if your circuit uses high speed digital logic. I'll explain more about that in a blog post for this video, which I'm going to link to in the description. I also go over more tips and tricks for designing the PCB, so check that out if you're interested. Okay, here we have a little situation. There's no direct way to route this trace on the top layer without intersecting another trace, so I'll have to route it on the bottom layer. Up here in the Layers window, I'll just select the bottom layer so that the pencil icon appears next to it. Now the trace is colored blue to show that it's on the bottom layer. Now I can make a direct trace without having to route it in a big loop around another component. I'll finish this branch of the circuit on the top layer. Here's another place we're going to need to put some traces on the bottom layer. You can change the layer of an existing trace over here in the right side window under the layer field. Now I'll be able to get this trace to the volume potentiometer. Depending on how complicated your circuit is, it can get a little tricky. I need to get a trace from the audio input jack here up to the volume potentiometer. Since this is a circuit mount jack, the pads are on the top layer. That means that this trace needs to be on the top layer. But I already have traces on the bottom layer and top layer that are blocking it. I'm going to have to do some rearranging for it to work. I'm going to move this capacitor closer to the IC. I'll redraw this trace later. Put this trace on the bottom layer. Well, maybe I'll just delete it for now. Now I can draw the trace from the audio jack up to the volume potentiometer. All right, now all these traces are okay. Here's another little complicated spot. I have to get a trace from the audio output to pin 4 of the LM386. And pin 6 of the LM386 needs to connect to the positive terminal of this capacitor. I can just put the trace on the bottom layer and give it a little extra room.
Once you've got all the traces drawn, check to make sure you haven't missed anything. Oh, looks like I forgot one here. Okay, now I'll save the PCB file. I'll just name it LM386PCB. And there's one last thing to do before we submit the PCB for production. It's called a design rule check. This is going to tell us if we have any overlapping components or traces anywhere. To run the design rule check, go over here to the right side window and click on Design Manager. Now scroll down to the bottom, and you'll see this DRC errors folder. Click refresh, and if nothing appears, the circuit has passed the test. In the blog post, I'll show you what happens when the PCB doesn't pass the design rule check. But basically, you'll see a red circle with an X, and the problem trace will be highlighted in the PCB editor. Design rule check just checks for physical issues that might be a problem when the board is manufactured. It won't tell you if you have everything connected the right way, or if your circuit works the way you want it to. It's always good to do one last final check against your schematic to make sure everything is connected the way it should be. If you want to close the file and come back to it later, you can find the PCB file in the My Projects section. Over here in the left drop down menu, you'll see My Projects. Click on that. And the schematic file and PCB file will be in your project folder. Just double click on it to open it. All right, now I think we're ready to submit this for manufacturing. Click on the Fabrication Output button up here in the top menu. Now you'll be able to select all the options for the PCB. How many layers you want it? I'm making a two-layer PCB. The dimensions are already determined by the board outline you make in the PCB editor. PCB quantity. The minimum quantity is 5. The cost for 5 PCBs is only $9.30. Ordering 10 only increases the price by 50 cents. The price goes up to $14.90 when I choose 15. And 20 is $15.90. Now these prices are for the specific board I designed. Yours will be different. I'm going to order 15 for now. You can also change the PCB thickness. I'll just leave it at the default 1.6 millimeters. And you can change the PCB color. There's a lot to choose from. I'm just going to keep it green. The PCB finish is what coats the exposed copper layer and prevents it from oxidation. Hassle is the standard, but it contains lead. Lead-free Hassle doesn't have lead, but it's a little bit more expensive. And ENIG is Electroplated Nickel and Gold. ENIG is ROHS compliant if you need that. Copper weight is the thickness of the copper layers. The weight you choose will depend on how much current you have in your circuit. Higher currents will need a thicker copper layer. And finally, panelized PCBs are how many PCBs you want on a panel. Choose one if you want each PCB cut out separately. Now, if you save the PCB to the cart, you'll be asked for your shipping and billing information. I ordered my PCBs and shipped them by airmail, the cheapest option, and it only took about two weeks to get them. I'm pretty impressed with the quality. There doesn't seem to be any defects on the boards. The board looks nice and glossy, and electrically they work great. I just finished soldering three amplifiers and they all sound really good. Getting your PCB manufactured by a made-to-order service like Easy EDA is really convenient. For the price, it's not really worth it to etch PCBs at home. It's messy and the chemicals are toxic too. Hopefully these two videos will help you convert your prototype circuit into a fully functional PCB. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section and be sure to like and subscribe if you liked it. All right, we'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.